Hi, everyone. This is James and Florence on the Forum Celebrity Podcast, and we have a very special guest today. Why don't you introduce her? Yes, we are live from the ESPN studios in Bristol, Connecticut, with ESPN radio anchor Christine Lisi. Hi, Christine. How are you? Hi, James. Hi, Florence. I'm good. How are you guys? Really good. And wow, we feel very important. The ESPN background, Christine's at work. We're just very, we're really very humbled today by having her on the show. But the first thing before we get into it, we want to dedicate the show and give a quick shout out to someone I know that you were close to, Chris Mortensen, who passed away sadly. And why don't you give us a couple stories with your relationship with Chris? He was so kind to everybody. Like he always, as big as a star that he was, he never was too big to like have time to talk to somebody about football or any other sport or, or even like life. I was always grabbing him on a Sunday morning when I worked on Sundays and he was here to ask him something about the Bills or just football in general. And then another funny quick story was when Rob and I got engaged a long time ago, Chris Berman had something for me, Bills oriented. So we came in on a Sunday and just real quick, like they have, it's called a war room and there's like... I don't know. There's like 10 TVs. They all have games on like <laughs> Boomer and Mort and Tommy Jackson and all those guys would just watch games all afternoon and then get ready for prime time. And so Boomer's like, why don't you come in and I'll give you the bill stuff. And I was like, okay, I wasn't sure if we'd be interrupting anything, but everybody was there. And I got my Jim Kelly bobblehead. Aww. <laughs> and then Mort comes up to Rob outside and he goes, you know, if uh, you didn't ask Christine to marry you soon, because Mort knew that we had dated a long time before we got engaged, like three and a half years or something like that. And Mort goes, Barry Melrose and I were going to come rough you up, just like teasing him <laughs> a little bit. And like that always stuck with me that he was so like kind and funny and just always in a good mood. Um, and I think like when someone passes, how you can tell what a good person they are. There's not a bad word to be said about him, right? Yeah. Like sometimes... People take that time to take shots. And like, if you looked online on Sunday, like I was so touched at seeing all my colleagues and just people in general, like how much he meant to them. And it was just, it's just a testament to what a wonderful person he was. And like, you know, he's, he's missed so much. Yeah. You could just tell a lot of, I was a huge fan of his, his knowledge was amazing, but yeah. his, you could tell the way he did it. He never really talked down to anybody. He taught even a new, you could tell someone who was nervous, who was yeah. just starting and he was so patient with them and he set them up. He would set them up to say something. And those are the little things that I caught. And I thought this is a really good partner to to be around because he, he watched out for everybody. So uh, we wanted to just give a quick shout yeah. out and just kind of give him a lot of love. So I'm a, a Raiders fan. The AFL, especially when you have a fan base that the Oakland fans used to be, now they've moved 10 times, but it, it's such a special family. And I think to me, the only team that I feel that has that old time family atmosphere it is the Buffalo Bills, the Bills Mafia. Tell me what it's like to be a Bills fan and just kind of the spirit of the fan base. I think um, for some people, it's hard, like unless you're like me, you're born into it or Rob who married into it. It's a little mm -hmm. hard to understand like the the connection. It's really like, a, it's kind of hard to describe because they live in in the community with people like they see them at the the store, the movies, the mall. And I think like you've seen it a lot over, especially the past couple of years. Um, they call for like something happens to somebody like, you know, when Josh Allen lost his grandmother or, you know, Jamar Hamlin or Trey White, when he got hurt a couple of years ago, like, hey, you know what? Let's show these guys that we care. And all of a sudden people start donating to a charity that me is near and dear to their heart. Like that, that's one example. Like DeMar just, when that happened with him, just to see the outpouring of love for him, uh, for, you know, from Bill's mafia and beyond, like just how it kept growing and growing and growing. And then you see like how the, the fans stick with the team through everything. You know, I've been through a lot of, uh, and James, you can probably relate to this too. Like a lot of six and tens, a lot of four and twelves, even two and fourteens. And, um, and we always stay. And I don't know, uh, I, I think for me, like you would be afraid of missing out on something like what happens when, you know, what, when we win the Super Bowl. And then another part about the team's connection to the community is like, 
with the snow last year and this year, like last year, people who lived next to the Bills, they were digging them out with their snow plows, um, making sure they got a ride to the airport to get to the Bears game or to get yeah. to the Lions game even before that. Um, and just and this year, when the Pittsburgh game got postponed, the playoff game, like people volunteering to, to shovel out the stadium and they did a pretty good job. Like I couldn't believe it. And, and I know some people were like, well, why didn't they give them tickets? Well, it was a playoff game and I'm assuming there weren't any tickets to be given. And I just think that like the love between Western New York, the community and the bills is just, it's kind of hard to describe unless, like I said, like you're in it or you marry into it or or like that. I remember, and we didn't really have any losing seasons for a long time when yeah. I was a little boy yeah. until the 80s. And then they moved to L.A. and then it kind of crashed and burned. But I remember someone asked me what it's like to be a, a Raider fan. And that's why I love the Bills Mafia so much. I went to Walmart one time to get some candy. I got off work. It's like midnight. And there was a single mom there with three kids going to the store and her truck wouldn't start. So I got a jumper cable and I started it and she tried to give me some money. And I looked yep. at her and I said, go Raiders. And she just yep. started to laugh. Yeah. That's kind of what the spirit is. And that's why, you know, big shout out to Bill's mafia for their spirit. Ezra Castro, Pancho B, I got to be friends with. Oh, yeah. And that was that we had prayer nights for him and mm -hmm. we had, it was amazing. The outpouring of support for him. He was such a great guy and the love that people yeah. still had for him and the players too that reached out to him was very special so it's a very special fan base i hope it always uh, stays that way also how did you get first started and i've never heard anything when you get first started at espn what's your story of getting on to be on the team well i started actually as a production assistant in 19 i tried out they had tryouts and you took the lgfe quiz and they fly out to Bristol and he asks you like all these questions, like who's the NBA six man. And, um, mm -hmm. I got asked about now I'm old. So it was the AFC central, you know, with the Steelers and the Browns, Steelers, Browns uh, Bengals, instead of the yep. AFC North now, um, yeah, so the that, Oilers. <laughs> yes, exactly. And it was so funny because like, sometimes I find myself, I'm like, wait, let's get that division. Right. And so I was quizzed on that and I didn't think I did that well, but I did okay and they hired me so I worked out here as a as a PA on Sports Center and then I got to be on NHL tonight which they were like a series of um sports specific shows at night on ESPN2 in the in the 90s which was yeah. fun a lot of experience I got to travel um and I love hockey so that was fun I just left briefly to work in Hartford Radio Springfield and Hartford Radio and um and then I applied to I tried out to come back here part time in radio and they brought me on part time in 2000 and I've been here ever since wow Bob, I remember Bob Lee we were big fans yeah. of NHL he was yep. so amazing and uh when ESPN first started I was a kid and I'm telling you I remember my friends coming over and we just would have slumber parties and we would yep. watch the same games over and over yep. and we were just like this is the greatest invention known to man. This is great. And I remember how everyone thought, this is so stupid. 24 <laughs> hour sports, who is going to like this? And the next thing you know, it just took off. Uh, same as MTV before they yep. became a porn station. But yep. well, uh, <laughs> it's, like, it's like, do you remember? I don't know if it was actually from Anchorman or if it was Will Ferrell playing. Um, playing Ron Burgundy. He's oh, like, yeah. He's like, an all-weather station? Good <laughs> luck with that. Or, you know what I mean? Yeah. And I remember, oh yeah. And and that, I remember people going, why are you watching that say You'll be off in a year. And I'm like, are you kidding? <laughs> all it is is reruns or all it is is <laughs> NHL or uh, it yep. was amazing. Our friends just thought this was the greatest thing known to man. But uh, now also, you have really, you and your husband, I really like your spirit uh, online, mm -hmm. and he's got an online thing that we're going to be talking about on our podcast, uh, Secondary. What is your take on just how huge the NFL has become? Now, it hasn't passed the World Cup. That's in its own stratosphere. Sure. But what is, this must be crazy. I mean, the first Super Bowl didn't even sell out. And now you've got tickets. I, I'm reading where they may be 25 ticket by 20. It has even blown me away. Did you ever think NFL would get this huge? 
It's funny because you mentioned ticket prices. My parents went to a Super Bowl in Pasadena. It might have been, I was like seven or eight. Yeah. Cause they went to Pasadena and they had the tickets like uh, enclosed in like this thick frame. And the, the tickets were $25. <laughs> wow. Um, and like, it's so funny because um, now I just remember being younger and football would start like, yeah, you'd be a little bit interested in training camp in July. And then in January it would be done. I don't know if they played like the Super Bowl during the day in the early days, maybe. But it's funny because it was like, you know, four months. The season was four months. And then you're like, OK, next year. But now it's like it's like 12 months around. Right. It's yeah. around because like you have I don't even know where to start. Like you start it just it the cycle never ends. Like right after the Super Bowl, you're talking about the draft and you and then guys are getting released. And because you have to get under the cap by a certain date, the league year starts in March. Yeah. It starts next week. And it's just like. And then you have um, OTAs and mini camp and training camp. And then it's just like, it's week one. And then all of a sudden you're at the Super Bowl. And I'm like, what happened? The How ESPN, this... they're masters at getting people to think something is super important. Some of this stuff as a fan, to me, I don't really watch. I don't like, I, I know friends that wake up at seven and watch the 70 hour pregame show on Super Bowl. Sure. I yep. can't do that. But I think what they've done, which masterful, is bring in like the NFL combines. I mean, mm -hmm. before they didn't even. I remember watching the NFL draft with Dr. Z. Yeah, uh, yep. we yep. we we used to have parties uh, for about twenty years. We had draft parties, and I remember Dr. Z, and it looked like these guys were in a cabinet. I mean, it yes. was unbelievable, and it was very nonchalant. No one really watched it; only mm -hmm. really hardcore. And now it's a three day event, and they have bands and they have everything yeah. so i just think espn and the nfl have really worked well at just marketing it to to the average ordinary fans and made it into a religion and, and I, it's amazing i think like to that point um what i found amazing was the way that we were able to and the league too we as a company uh, during covid when players got drafted at home yeah like I thought that was a neat thing. And James, to your point too, how you make it appeal to so many other people is that you tell these kids stories yep. and where they come from. And the fascinating thing that I have found too, like in, in other sports as well, but like the lineage, like did their grandfather play? Did their dad play? Did their uncle, their brother, like it's like the, like the Watt family right now, yep. right? Like that to see that is really, really neat. And I think like you hit the nail on the head, like how the NFL has just become this, this huge business. And like the salary cap this year is 250 million. I saw when it started in 94 yesterday, I, I, it was like ridiculously though. It was under $40 million. And yeah. you're like, how was that? How is that even possible? Right. Well, going back to that, I remember growing up at the Raiders. My dad was a season ticket holder and he knew some of the Raiders and you would meet them. I mean, Marv Hubbard had a muscle car and the kids would go and check out his car. And Ken Stabler, my dad mm -hmm. had a beer with Ken Stabler. Wow. He would just be in a bar, bar sitting there. And I got to be friends, uh, uh, casual friends with his family who are just absolutely uh, when we tried to get him into the Hall of Fame. Mm -hmm. uh, after he passed and they were just the salt of the earth and it just like the bills you'd meet people lester hayes i got to meet at home depot and talk to him and i mean you you see these and they're so kind uh mm -hmm. cliff branch and all these people and i think that's kind of with the bills uh the same way because the, these guys didn't make a lot of money like you said yeah so they had to get i remember uh dave casper sold in, i think it was dave casper who sold insurance so oh. in the off season, so these guys weren't getting rich, you know, right. off, off these games. So, yep. uh, so it was a kind of, that's why you got a real loyalty to, to these people. Uh, also, I wanted to ask you, there was so much made and maybe Florence could ask this a little bit better with Travis Kelsey. And I'll let Florence ask this one. Sure. With uh, Travis Kelsey <clears throat> and Taylor Swift. What was your take? What is your feeling on the fact that Taylor Swift brought a whole new set of eyes, a new generation of young girls who otherwise would not have been maybe interested in the NFL, let alone sports or the Chiefs? Um, at such a young age, she literally brought a whole new audience. Um, what's your take on that? I thought it was fantastic. Me like, too. I just... She seems like a great girl. I don't know her. I don't know him. 
they seem like great people. They seem mm -hmm. happy and I'm all for love. Who's Me not too. for love? And I think like, my thing is like, if it brought these girls or whoever, like these girls down to watch football and spend a couple hours with their moms and dads mm -hmm. or family members on Sundays, that's more family time. That's more bonding time. That's something to say, hey, you know what? I watched the Chiefs win their third Super Bowl with my family. And like you could be in your like 50s or 60s and like remember the, those good times, those great Sundays that we spent. I think it's great. And I don't know why some people don't like it. I mean, what's... What's they not to show, like? <laughs> they don't show her that much. Like, I yeah. see Jerry Jones five or six times a game, and I'm like, exactly. okay. So I see her for ten seconds. It 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 never bothered me, right? Me like, either. I only hope that like she was unhappy when we beat them in Kansas City in the regular season, <laughs> and I wanted her to be unhappy in the playoffs, and she was not <laughs> unhappy. <laughs> That's all that I wanted. <laughs> Right? That's right. Yeah. No, I agree with you completely. Um, I did want to also ask you, because as well known as you are as an ESPN radio anchor, you're also pretty popular when it comes to your baking, especially <laughs> online. I mean, you have the most uh, amazing recipes that you're Thank always you. sharing with your followers and your listeners, and everybody loves them. I mean, you get like so many accolades and so many positive comments and you know likes and shares and i see all of that on social media we both do so can you just tell us very quickly a little bit about how you started baking why you started baking and a little bit about your website well um like you florence i'm italian yes <laughs> <laughs> and so like baking and food has always been like a big part of my life um i remember baking with both of my grandmothers one of my grandmothers is still here she's oh, 98 oh wow. <laughs> so and she has a sweet tooth so when i go visit her i always make sure i bring molasses cookies to her oh. um and i've always like i've always had fun baking and cooking and like i think it just kind of stayed with me and like working here it just seems like and like you guys know like being in radio in general like you work nights and weekends and long hours and mm -hmm. it's not always easy and like if i can bring in cookies or brownies and that makes people happy like that i'm so happy about that like they must it, love it you know i just <laughs> i don't know it's you. just simple like i just i enjoy baking and it it you know and it's funny because rob will be like can you make brownies and I, he, i'm like sure and he'll have one and then i'm like what? <laughs> so i bring them into work and these guys mm. like get the rest of them so it works out pretty good Plus, I saw your dog sneaking a couple oh, every once in a while, so too. Cute. So cute. Uh, <laughs> she does. Beautiful she has a dog. sweet tooth. It's very <laughs> funny. I was like, my goodness. I never heard of a dog with a sweet tooth, but Gracie does. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That, Runs in the family. I think the baking <laughs> is just really, really fun to be able to bring it to work mm -hmm. and be able to share it with people because that, you know, is a different side of you and different part of you also i wanted to ask you what do you think is your one likes to brag well some people do like to brag but you don't like to brag and we don't either but what are some of the things that you really are proud of that you've done at espn that you think you brought to the table that have really kind of kind of things that you'll remember i think one of the things that i'm really proud of is that like i've been able to be here for so long i've been here since two and then in 2020 i got promoted to anchoring during the day, during the week, which that's always meant a great deal to me because I've always found that to be like a prestigious position here. And I've always yes. been very proud of like that. I, I think I have like a good news sense. And I will like, if you give my new updates are like a minute. And if you give me a minute, I'm going to tell you everything you need to know that day. And I think I do a good job of that. I think everybody else who works here does that as well. And then this is a little bit different, but a couple of weeks ago, Harry Douglas, who's a former NFL receiver, played for yeah, the Titans. He actually, Douglas. when he came here... He bought me flowers Aww. because like to thank me for like having such a positive impact on the department. And I think like that also means a great deal to me that mm -hmm. like, even though I don't think it's very much what I do, that like it's appreciated by people. Well, you have so many testosterone lace people. <laughs> you got a lot of egos, a lot of opinions, and it could get heated, I'm sure. And when someone has a positive outlook like you do and a positive presence, I think it really is refreshing. I think a lot, even with me, I wish I was a little bit more positive sometimes at looking at things. As a man, you kind of, sometimes you look at the negative first when sometimes you need to look at the positive first. So I think it's really important to have someone like you on, on the crew and I'm yes. sure they greatly appreciate it. Thank you. 
Well, Christine, we have loved talking to you. You are a presence online that we've always appreciated. And we are so humbled and you're gracious uh, to give us your time and just be a friend of you. We've enjoyed you, every everything that you've done. We've enjoyed your husband and your dog. Uh, and, and we just thank you for coming into our lives and just being a small part of it. And, uh, I, I hope that we continue that, uh, in the future. I feel the yes. same about you because like, and Rob said this too, like you guys are always positive. Like I always think like <laughs> you put a lot of goodness out there and like you guys Aww. do, you know, you keep killing it. And like, I appreciate you and like everything that you do, you do put a lot of good positivity out in the world. So we need more people like you. Well, thanks. Aww, Florence thank kind of does so everything. I just hold on to her shirt tail. She's, she's <laughs> the one so that true. does it all. So uh, anyway, thank you so much. Have a great day. Yeah, and we're going to put this out tomorrow, everyone. And we're really excited. Make sure you check her out. We're going to give her all the links to her website and to her Twitter page. Mm -hmm. And we just thank you so much, Christine, for being on the forum. Thank you, guys. Thank Appreciate you. you. Thank you for coming back. This was wonderful. Thank you. Take care. You too. Bye.